I travel full time in an RV and usually that means that I'm staying in beautiful places in the forest or in the desert, but I want to see a lot of things in my travels and that includes things in cities where it's really hard to find some overnight spots. So today I'm going to tell you guys about a recent trip I took to Toronto and where I stayed in a safe free spot for two nights so that I could do something that I've been planning and wanting to do for 10 years. Happy Sunday, bird watchers! It's Robin with Creativity RV. I hope you're all doing well out there. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you know that recently I went up the East Coast and over into Canada to visit my best friend who has a little lake house in the country, but I wanted to go with her into the city of Toronto where she lives normally so that we could attend a party and then I could do something really special to me that I'll tell you about in just a minute. But first, I want to talk to you about the options for camping in cities because it can be really tough, especially in a city as densely populated and crowded as Toronto with all of the traffic and buildings. Now, I looked at every app that I had and I'll tell you there was really not an RV park or a campground or a rest area or a truck stop near to where I was going, but there were three options in downtown Toronto to stay with Boondockers Welcome. If Boondockers Welcome is new to you, it's kind of new to me too. I've just been using it recently when I went up the East Coast and was looking for more camping options. I have it as part of my Harvest Host membership, but you can also get it on your own. But basically what it is, is a network of RVers that open up their properties for other RVers to stay overnight for free. And when I got to Toronto, there were no other options except Boondockers Welcome, and I found three of them right downtown, and one of them in particular was like a 10 minute drive from the party we were going to and the other thing that I needed to do. And look at this great house I got to stay in front of. The hosts were amazing. And the driveway was actually circular, which was great to get in and out of. I felt completely safe and my stay was free. And what's really nice about Boondoggers Welcome is that you can sometimes stay for longer than one night. It's up to the host. The Boondockers Welcome rules say that you can stay up to five days depending on the host, and the host that I stayed at allowed three days, and it was really easy. I went into the Boondockers Welcome site. You can see it here. I found the host. I saw that they allow three days. I went into the reservation system and asked to stay, and the host got right back to me inside of the messaging system inside of Boondockers Welcome and said I was welcome to stay. I wrote them back and asked if they would mind if I stayed for an extra night and they had no problem with that, which was great. If I didn't have Boondockers Welcome as an option, I probably would have had to stay 40 or 45 minutes away with the Toronto traffic and I probably wouldn't even have gone to the party. I definitely wouldn't have done the thing that I did the next day, which I'm going to tell you about right now. Some of you may be wondering why I opened up this video saying, hello, bird watchers. Well, some of my regular viewers call themselves bird watchers. I didn't start it, they did, after I told them that my family calls me bird. And some of you have asked me, what's hanging on the hook back here next to my door? I don't wear jewelry, but it's a necklace with a bird that is sitting outside of a cage. And I wanna tell you guys about that because when I got that necklace is when I decided to do the thing that I did in Toronto. I got that necklace to remind me that I was a bird that could be set free, but at that time, I didn't feel that way. I had some things in my life that I was always trying to fix or get over like all of us do, and I decided that once I accomplished that, I was going to get a tattoo on my arm that says bird set free. And that's what I did in Toronto. And I'm gonna to tell you about that experience today. What I realized in this experience is that not everything has to be perfect for me to be set free. I choose how I live my life and I choose how I interpret events that happen to me and how I put myself out into the world. And when I realized that, I realized it was time. And that was during my trip to Toronto. So my best friend and I, thanks to my stay at Poondockers Welcome, were able to go downtown and I got a tattoo right here on my arm. 
I don't know if you guys can see it. I'll show you some pictures of it. It's very fine. And it says bird set free. And the way that I had it put on my arm is so that when I'm holding a steering wheel, I can see it and it's pointing right to the road. Or when I'm writing, I can see it and it's pointing towards my keyboard. Getting this tattoo has honestly been really invigorating. I didn't think my nomadic life could get better, but right after I got this and I was holding the steering wheel and driving for hours and hours, I was like, yeah, this is good. I did this and I am set free. Now, the only thing I was worried about, I'll tell you, was my mom seeing it and my dad because they don't like tattoos. And finally, when I went to go visit them, last month for the first time, I just showed them and I explained to them why I got it. And I'm so lucky to have the parents I do because they got it. And I'll tell you what, now when I'm making a decision or something's going on, each of them have said to me individually, well, remember what's on your arm, what's on your arm. Just keep that in mind. Met somebody the other day that I didn't know and they saw my tattoo and they said, what set you free? And I thought about it for a second and I said, myself. And the guy said, that's amazing. And I was thinking, yeah, you know what? It's not bad. So I did that. I would not get a tattoo for no reason. I'm all about them. They're fine. They're great. But for me, I only want to have things on my body that remind me of what I want out of my life and things that are positive. So if I go to a great desert, I might put some desert stars on there, some forest or, you know, some other text. I don't know but I'm excited to see what happens. Now, if any of you are wanting a tattoo, I can tell you this did not hurt. It really didn't. Um, it's tiny and the needle was skinny because it's script. So I think it depends on what you're getting done and where it is on your body. But tattoos have come a long way in the last 20 years. And I was surprised that I wasn't more uncomfortable during the tattoo. And afterwards, it really didn't hurt at all. And my bestie and I got to go to a local cafe and we had a drink to say goodbye to each other. And then I went on my way and came back down to the States. And as always, if you guys are wanting to do something in your life that sets you free, do it. I can tell you that it's worth it. I will see you guys next Sunday with an all new video. Until then, everybody out there, have happy travels and be free.